Hello everyone, my name is Lamont Pounds. I am co-founder and CEO of Adventurous Mind Studios, and I co-partner with a gentleman named Prince Smith, and together we'll be discussing on how we use the software Clip Studio Paint to execute our animations. And today we'll be discussing the animatic process. So to create our animatics using Clip Studio Paint, we like to work in the animation creation format. So to get started, we click on File New, then we click on the animation tab to show the animation file creation settings. We like to work in a 2K resolution setting, so that's 2048 by 1080p with a resolution of 200. And now we'll dive deeper into setting up our files as we move onward to the rough animation process. But for now, there isn't much adjusting needed for the animatic, so let's begin. We use the timeline palette to create animation. If the palette is not displayed, select the Windows menu and go to timeline. You can change the start frame and end frame by dragging the blue rectangle. And also, you can drag the rectangle on the edge of the start frame and end frame to change the length of a clip. So if you have different animations evolved in your scene, say effects, you can have your effects end a lot sooner than the animation of your character. Now the animation folder. Animation folders are shown as a single track in the timeline palette. Layers in the animation folder can be set as animation cells in the timeline palette. So if you would like to storyboard your scene by animating the keyframes yourself for your animatic, you would just treat it normally as you would for the animation, which we will discuss more later on. But for your animation folder, click new animation cell and create a new cell for your animatic and proceed forward that way. Now, if you already have pre-existing storyboards already made, and if you want to time out your storyboards to get an idea of what the final animation can look like, you can import your PNG images into the animation folder. You can either right click on the animation timeline and specify your image into cells, or you can click the specify cell box here and import your frames that way also. Now, if you want to add on to these storyboard images, you must first rasterize each PNG if you don't, it will not allow you to draw on these images you import. Just right click on the image in the folder and click rasterize. But another thing you can do, you can simply add on top of the images by creating a new animation folder and proceeding that way. So I said before, you can import your storyboard images, scale and adjust them as you need to, time them out in the animation setting to get a good idea on how the final render for your animation would look like. We like to make sure for each separate animation involved in our shot are animated on their own separate layers, just so we can see the action and the scene better and also adjust them accordingly without affecting the other parts in the animation. So to quickly execute coloring, we like to use the lasso fill tool, which is located here on your toolbar. But if by chance it's not there, you can tap U on your keyboard, tap it until it directs you to its folder. It's a sub tool figure under direct draw. It allows you to draw your shape. And once you complete the shape, it will fill your image with the color of your choosing. All right, so here we have our main character landing. It is key for us to make sure all the animation involved with this action is all made to one folder. It is goal for us to do our best organizing these files as we move forward, making it a bit easier for us to navigate these files properly without much complications. And we are going to repeat this task with our monster's head. We're going to make sure the files are separated properly. And then we're going to add in a little bit of debris and then some dust smoke as the head makes contact with the ground, following up to our mindless eater character, who's in a foreground shot. So a quick tip on organization, you can color code your folder however you like. This is very helpful when there's a lot of moving parts involved in one shot. And in our next video, we'll be discussing 2D camera tool. And also we'll give a tip on a little animation trick that we like to do to execute subtle movement. So thank you. I'm Lamont Pounds, and until next time, stay safe.